Welcome to our online Sunday service. Today we're celebrating a frontline Sunday, a Sunday when we're thinking especially of the relevance of our faith to what we'll be doing this time tomorrow. We believe that when Jesus Christ became incarnate, he took upon himself full and complete human nature to redeem all aspects of our lives. And so he's not confined just to church on Sunday. And please join us as we explore how our faith is expressed in our everyday lives. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, Hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry, they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us together confess our sins to Almighty God. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. So may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, whose only Son opened up for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the exiles of this Persian in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen and destined by God the Father and sanctified by the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and to be sprinkled with, blood, with his blood, may grace and peace be yours in abundance. A reading from Luke's Gospel and the Book of Acts. First Luke. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Now Acts. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power, when the Holy Spirit comes on, comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Today is the first of our Frontline Sundays, when we look at the church's front line. But where exactly is this front line? In our first reading, Peter gives us a clue by addressing his first letter to the exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia. He uses two terms, one derived from the Old Testament and one from Jewish culture. He uses the term exiles referring to the Old Testament exile of the Jews in Babylon, when the Jews were deported from their homeland by the Babylonians who'd conquered the land and they took them to Babylon. And Peter uses the term dispersion or diaspora and this refers to Jews in the ancient world who didn't live in Palestine but lived in Jewish communities all over the Roman Empire. But there's no evidence in the rest of the text that Peter's writing only to Jewish believers. So he's using these terms to apply to all Christians. Just as the Jews during the exile and Jews scattered all around the Roman Empire were living in a culture that didn't share their faith. So Christians in general are living amongst people who don't share our faith in Christ. In our reading from Acts, Jesus, just before his ascension, says that his disciples will be his witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So the church's front line is wherever Christians come into contact with people who don't know Christ, people in error and darkness who need his light and truth, people in despair who need his love and his hope. 
That's the church's front line. And who's on that front line? According to Peter, it's people who have been chosen and destined by God the Father and sanctified by the Spirit to be obedient to Christ and to be sprinkled with his blood. All who are called and chosen by God the Father made holy by God the Holy Spirit and redeemed by the death of God the Son to be his followers. In other words, all Christians are on the church's front line. Each of us comes into contact with people who need Christ, whether it's in our families in our places of work or study, in places where we go to shop or enjoy ourselves. And even if we can't get out much, there are people who visit our homes, carers, cleaners, friends. We are all on the church's front line from Monday to Saturday, as well as on Sunday. That's one of the great spiritual truths that was recovered at the Reformation. Martin Luther wrote, it is pure invention that Pope, bishops, priests and monks are to be called the spiritual estate, while princes, lords, artisans and farmers are called the temporal estate. That is indeed a fine bit of lying and hypocrisy Yet no one should be frightened by it, and for this reason, that all Christians are truly of the spiritual estate, and there is among them no difference at all but that of office. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, 12, we are all one body, yet every member has its own work, whereby it serves every other all because we have one baptism, one gospel, one faith, and are all alike Christians. For baptism, gospel, and faith alone make us spiritual and a Christian people. And it's a great shame that this truth that was recovered at the Reformation is so often lost even by people with impeccable Protestant credentials. I've heard guest preachers from missionary societies misusing Jesus' words in Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations to belittle what ordinary Christians do in their ordinary lives, making people feel guilty by asking has God called you to stay where you are? To be honest, if he hasn't given you a clear call to serve him somewhere else, he probably has called you to stay where you are. The go in Matthew 28, 19 isn't an imperative. In the Greek, it's a participle. Going, make disciples. Or we could render it make disciples as you go. The church's front line to which we are all called is right here. It's right where you'll be this time tomorrow. And one of the reasons we meet together on Sunday in church or these days also online or through the weekly circular is so that we can be equipped to be on the front line from Monday to Saturday when in the course of our daily lives, we can be the light of Christ to those in darkness, the truth of Christ to those going astray, and the love of Christ to those in need. But how can we do that? Peter says we're sanctified by the Spirit. In Luke and Acts, Jesus promises that we will be clothed with power from on high. 
we have received the Holy Spirit and can trust in his guidance. A kind word here, a helping hand there, the opportunity to show Christ in the integrity of our dealings with others, the opportunity to share the truth of Christ in our everyday conversations, even just the courage to say, I went to church if a colleague asked us what we did at the weekend. Let's encourage and pray for one another as we go out on the front line tomorrow. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, the source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took on our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in him, one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we lift our prayers to God this day, we keep in mind especially our most valuable school communities which return to study this week. Loving Father, we pray for the whole Church of Christ across all nations. We ask that in these times of change, the transformation would be yours and that we would hear your voice speaking to us clearly and act according to your will. We pray that our schools will become places of worship where the gospel will be shared and we ask you to bless our ministry in them, particularly as we embark on transforming lives for good and adapt our open the book ministries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we give you thanks for our creation and the society to which we belong. We ask you to guide us in our stewardship as we reflect on the environment and giving in our communities this month. We pray for wisdom for those in authority. We ask that you would strengthen our leaders, especially our teachers, and that anxiety might be replaced with joy despite their heavy workloads and fast changing guidance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of belonging, we give you thanks for our local communities and the generosity from within. We ask you to bless all good deeds and bring provision where there is need through your people. We ask that you would do a work in all of us and draw us closer to you in community. We pray especially for all those who are part of our school communities that you would grant them encouragement, wisdom and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of restoration, we ask for comfort and wholeness for those living under the shadows of unhappiness, abuse, pain or fear. May they find faith in discovering their identity in you and knowing your amazing grace in their lives and your peace which passes all understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we pray for all those that have gone before us and we pray especially for those that suffer with grief, having not been able to say farewell in the usual ways in this difficult time. Surround them with your love and the kindness of others, and let us rejoice in the communion of saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us conclude our prayers with the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Amen. Thank you for joining us today as we've been looking at how we can be equipped for God's service this time tomorrow. And so let us pray for God's blessing on everything we do during the week. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this time tomorrow and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us and keep safe. Goodbye. Thank you.